The current Pac-12 hopeful for the playoffs and currently undefeated Washington Huskies are traveling to Oregon State where they're underdogs, Drew. It opened at minus one for Oregon State, and now it's moved all the way to minus two and a half for Oregon State. And this Oregon State Beavers team is a very, very good team. They won 10 games last year. They returned almost every single one of their O-linemen, and they've pretty much kept that momentum rolling. And they're, you know, sitting comfortably at third in the Pac-12 right now, controlling their own destiny. And Washington, Drew, ever since that Oregon game, they have not been playing to their to their best capabilities. You know, Penix has been doing too much, and the, the the players around them have not been doing enough to take the load off of Penix, you know? And whenever I'm looking at this Oregon State defense, they are a solid group on defense, especially with stopping the run. So when you look at Michael Penix and how he's played the last couple of games, how do you think this Oregon State defense is going to fare trying to hold Penix down? Well, I think the best way to keep Michael Penix out of this game is to keep him off the field. If I'm Oregon State, my game plan is revolving around how much of the game can we make Michael Penix watch, meaning how many long drives can Oregon State put together? This is a Washington defense that is very vulnerable, and we've seen pretty much almost every game this season. You know, there's been teams that have been able to go up and down the field on him and score at will. Obviously, we know what Washington is, and we could talk about their offense and how great it is all day long. But in the same breath, they... Oregon State has a lot of talented linemen up front, a lot of big guys, a lot of guys are going to be playing in the NFL. People don't really think about Oregon State as much. This is a team that was in the gutter a few years ago, but they have slowly but surely built their way up to a very respectable pro- respectable program in college football. And one of the main reasons is that is that staple of offensive linemen that they keep bringing in. So if I'm Oregon State, I'm trying to do everything in my power to put together as long of drives as possible. You know, I like DJ Uyagalale. I think he's a really good quarterback, but Oregon State also has some really good running backs. Martin Martinez, he runs hard. He runs downhill. And I think that kind of plays a little bit of a weakness into Washington's defense. You know, Washington's not very good against the run. And if Oregon State is able to kind of pull a uh, Michigan in a way, where remember how Michigan ran the ball on Penn State, didn't even attempt to throw the ball because they didn't have to. I think that would benefit Oregon State greatly if they are able to keep the ball out of the air. Because when you're running the ball behind some good offensive linemen, it just seems like a lot less could go wrong compared to where you're throwing uh, the ball. And I think that's really the main key for Oregon State, Aiden. Yeah, Washington's defense coming at seventh in the Pac-12 in run defense. And that Oregon State O-line, they are one of the best run blocking groups in the country consistently getting to the second level, to the linebackers, to the, to the DBs, and getting a hat on a hat and, and enabling Martinez to get to that second level and explode, you know, for 10-plus yards down the field. Now, as far as Michael Penix goes, Drew, he cannot do it all himself. And it looks like he kind of has that mentality over the last couple weeks that if, if, if he can't do it, the Washington Huskies aren't going to win, you know. Now, they're talented on the perimeter, and they have guys on the offense, but it's been the Michael Pinnock show, Drew. What did the Washington offense need to do to take the load off of Pinnock and just enable him to make throws a little bit more, you know, without the, the defense knowing that it's going to go through Michael Pinnock? Yeah, well, with Washington, they like to take a lot of home run shots down the field. And I think with Oregon State, I think that honestly kind of benefits them a little bit. And I know Oregon State doesn't have the greatest secondary in the world, but all their corners Aiden, are above six foot. They got a bunch of lengthy corners out there. And that's going to make it tough to throw in some tight windows, you know, when you're playing against length like that. I, Washington's going to have to find a way to run the ball. And you've mentioned it and you hit the, you know, the nail on the head. Michael Pinnock sometimes gets in a situation where he feels like there's too much pressure on him and he tries to make plays that he shouldn't try to make. I get it. He's a Heisman candidate quarterback, probably the Heisman front runner. Uh, you can argue that a little bit. But in the same breath, too, that could be the detriment of him, too, thinking that he has to do too much. You have to be able to trust your team to win these big games. It is a full 11-man sport. You have to be able to trust everyone on your team to do your job, and you can't put yourself in a situation where you're making silly mistakes thinking you got to do it all, especially, again, in an environment like this. Oregon State's a really good football team. I know people don't pay attention to them, but it's going to be at Oregon State. This is probably going to be one of the biggest games at Oregon State or at their stadium in probably God knows how long. The environment, this is going to be the toughest environment Washington's played in, I think. Um, Obviously, you know, they played in some big games. They played at home versus Oregon, but they haven't really had that true test on the road yet to where they're really going to be dealing with a very hostile crowd and they're going to get that in this game. 
you're going to have to be in a situation where you're going to have to find a way to run the ball. It gets hard to throw the ball no matter how good your offense is when you have thousands and thousands of fans roaring at you. Washington's going to have to find a way to run the football, and they got to find a way to stop the run, too. I, I think, you know, if Washington can win both on the ground and both offense and defense, I think Washington set up nicely. And Oregon State, it all depends on what the scores of this game is. If they, if this game's played in the 20s, I think that benefits Oregon State. But if Washington's able to get in the 30s, I think Washington is going to comfortably win the game. Uh, but it's going to be no easy task to score 30 points against this Oregon State defense, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, there's an old saying that coaches love to say, you throw the ball to score and you run the ball to win. And Washington has really been living and dying by that pass. And, you know, if you throw on first and 10 or second and medium, you're setting yourself up behind the sticks. You know, it's going to be second and long and third and long. Those are a lot harder to convert than when, you know, you have an established run game and you know you're going to be getting three to five yards on that run and you can set up the play action off of that, control the clock, like you're mentioning, will be a big factor in this game. But Oregon State, Drew, is a physical team. They are a physical group. And when I look at this Washington team, I do not think that they are nearly as physical as Oregon State. Also, Oregon State is 17-1 and one in their last 18 home games. So that home, that home factor for Oregon State is very, very big. You know, it's similar to like an SEC home advantage, right? Now, when I'm looking at this spread, with it being minus one for Oregon State, that just tells me the bookmakers think it is going to be really, really close, you know, less than a field goal game. But you get about three to three and a half points for just being the home team. So with Oregon State opening up only as minus one, that leads me to believe, you know, Vegas and the odds makers think that Washington is going to pull this out, right? Now with the spread moving all the way to two and a half for Oregon State, a lot of people are putting money on Oregon State. You know, a lot of people like that pick. And if you're if you watch the Pac-12 and you watch Oregon State, it is a good pick, you know, especially with how Washington's been trending the last couple of weeks. I think part of the reason is because they're just experiencing a little bit of victory fatigue from that Oregon game. So as far as my pick goes, I've been going back and forth. I, I I liked Oregon State at the beginning of the week, but I get very apprehensive when everybody's on board with me. You know what I'm saying? And I think that this could be a game where Penix, you know, doesn't have like his Heisman game, but really steps up and show why he's in the Heisman race and what makes him so good. You know, good quarterbacks, they'll have a couple bad games, but then when they bounce back, they bounce back hard. And it wouldn't surprise me to see Washington State win because of how Penix plays. And they have so many weapons on the outside. Adunze is top two receiver in, the, in college football right now, in my opinion, only behind Trey Harris at Ole Miss. So the weapons are there for Washington. If Penix has a good game, I think that they'll come out. It'll be a very, very close game. And like I said, I liked Oregon State at the beginning of the week, but I flipped my pick to the Huskies. Yeah, and I've been back and forth in this game, too. This is a very tough game to pick. It's almost like one of those games where there's really no right or wrong answer because if you make a case for either team, it makes sense. You know, Washington has all the weapons in the world to be able to put up a lot of points and score a lot, and they're going to get the Oregon State team. That's more of a kind of control the ground uh, kind of team. But when I look at Oregon State at home versus on the road, Oregon State, like you mentioned, Aiden, is a very, very good home team. I mean, this is a team that beat Utah at home, that beat UCLA at home. And they've struggled a little bit on the road, though. That you know, if this game was played at Washington, I don't think I would have any question but to pick Washington in this game. And as we mentioned before, Washington, you know, they really haven't had that true test on the road yet, so it's very hard for me to know what kind of Washington team I'm going to get from them. Obviously, Washington, can, of course, can come in, and score 40 points, and win the game uh, pretty comfortably. Oregon State's just not built to handle that. And it is hard for me to pick Oregon State, too, just because of how everyone leans one way. I think the same way you do. I don't like it when everyone's picking one way because then I think I'm kind of just jumping the boat. And I think the bookmakers are laughing at me when I do that. In the same breath, though, Aiden, I really like Oregon State. I've liked them all year. And this is kind of an underrated team in college football. Washington can't get caught lacking, nor do I think they will. But that victory fatigue is real. And there's a lot of pressure on Washington to make the playoffs right now. And Oregon State, there's a lot of... uh lot of expectations to make the Pac-12 title game now and they're hungry for it and they're going to try to prove something and I think it starts this week I think Oregon State gets it done and that's very tough for me because I like Washington too uh, you you remember at the beginning of the year I picked Washington to be a playoff team but there's just too many red flags that I'm seeing for this Washington team right now and maybe they you know Washington does lose and maybe somehow get in there's talks of Oregon getting in with one loss so Washington's not done if they lose this game I just have that. I, I got to go with my gut feeling and close spreads like this. And I think Oregon State gets the win. 
Yeah, draw like both of these teams as well. You know, it is going to be a very, very good game. That's one thing I can promise you. Neither team, I think, will blow anybody out. And that Oregon State run game and, and how physical they play on defense, I really like Oregon State too, man. This game's going to be great. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Let us know in the comments what you think, what some keys to victory are. And uh, go watch some other videos we posted recently. You know, the Texas A&M coaching jobs up. Is Coach Prime going to take that? Chip Kelly fired at UCLA and a bunch of other videos, guys. So check those out. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like the content. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.